All right, guys, welcome back. And I went ahead and shot these off camera. I got this thing shot, just a quick cut on there. It's in the engine compartment, so I'm not looking for perfection there. Um, this part you can't hardly see behind the bumper, so I didn't like cherry that out real nice. I've done that before, and then I just realized you can't even see it hardly. So a lot of extra work for nothing. So on this one, since the bumpers are gonna be the focal point when they're gonna have gonna be somewhat restored like that you might not really notice you know something like that so I'm just don't want to spend time on stuff that's not necessary make the thing I'm gonna make this thing look really nice but those are just some of the ideas I put out there for you guys doing your own uh, if you want to try some of the stuff you find out that you know you, I mean I've spent hours and hours on one of those things that just made it like really perfect and it was like and then the exhaust touched it and it burned the paint off, you know. So it's like, anyway, I learned my lesson. So anyway, this is, I got to get the top of this bed done here. Uh, and I've got, I just shot a real light coat of primer on here. Uh, not really even enough to cover it. I just had some left in the gun of the thin product I used for that. Um, that I used Tamco. Their urethane primer, you can use it as a sealer. Uh, it's actually very refined and you can thin it down and shoot it on as a sealer. It adheres really well. It's a DTM, true DTM product. It adheres really, really well to bare metal. And then go right over that with uh, paint. So I just did a couple coats on there so that it's a little hard to spray back in the corners. So I know that I won't be able to get it around all these corners and edges really well and up under here you gotta think about that when you put stuff on that's why i paint stuff ahead of time before it goes back on because again when it was built in the factory it was dipped after all the metal was assembled so and that was dipped in like a real thin primer type of stuff and that's actually the only protection that was on this area so but i'm going to paint in here it's it's going to be really hard to do uh, I'll probably get some runs. I'll probably, you know, have some issues because reaching a gun down in through here is going to be really hard. Um, so I bought a mini gun for that. So I bought this little fella. I think it's a four ounce pot. And it's a cheap one. I mean, it's like really cheap. But I really don't use these that much. So I don't like using a mini gun. I, I don't know. They just don't help me at all. You know, other than when I'm in a tight area like this. So I may not use this thing very much. And if I do, then I'll get a better one. Of course, you know, that's the way I look at it is uh, if I use something for a while and I wear it out, a cheap one, then I'll get a better one. And mainly what I look for on these is it doesn't have a taper on taper fit on here. The seal is on the outside. I don't know if you can even see it. But it's on the outside, goes around here, and it doesn't have that taper on taper fit. So it should be fine. It'll be pretty easy to clean. It should last a little while. Um, it is very cheap. It, it does have like, this knob is, is funky. I don't know what's going on with it. The fan just keeps going and going and going. So I don't know. It's kind of weird. So it shuts all the way off, but then it opens up. And it can, it can just unscrew that thing all the way if you want. So it's kind of weird. I don't know. But I don't really need a very, very big fan. I don't need really much to do this. So this thing will work fine for that. And the pot drips. I was just testing it out. I was using it last night on some of these parts. I didn't do all this stuff with it. But I shot a few things with it and just to see how it worked. And it will shoot paint. That's all I'm looking at. Protection, mostly for in here. Not trying to make it look good. So the plan is right now to uh, get this edge cleaned up a little bit. It's a little bit, you know, a little bit like that. Get that cleaned up a little bit and get these pieces on. Let's see if I can get a wider screen. These pieces back on here and then put them in place and actually uh, mark off where the holes are going to be. And then drill the holes for the uh, for the welds. Because I was thinking, well, I could use panel adhesive to put this on. Or I can just do it with um, 
just welding it. So I was thinking I might just weld it. It just might be easier to do for me. So I was thinking about it as well. It takes a little more time to weld it, but try to set them in place. And then I'm going to have to weld the seam. There's a seam, I think, in the middle of this one. And then one, I don't know, there's other ones up in the front. So I have to weld those anyway, so I'm going to have to touch up anyway. So I figured, why not just weld them in? And there's only one weld. Actually, when it originally, I think it was like one weld every other groove. I might just do it every one of them. I don't know. It was like, like one here, and then it was one down there. And then it wasn't that many welds. If you can see here, here they are. There's a weld. There's a weld. There's a weld. So they were spaced more than, you know, there's a dip here another dip here and another you know one here so i could go every other one and it was only one weld on each one and that would be you know to factory spec so you know i don't know i'll figure out that later but i'll just let you know if you're doing one of these that's what they that's how they were put on um and then i'll just start getting these ready i want to get this painted inside here first and then i'm going to put those on but i'm going to spray these I'm going to drill them and then spray them upside down and have them all painted underneath here so I can just do like a little bit of touch up because honestly, if you've ever, you know, even just getting your arm in here with this gun, you know, if you can see with a full size gun in here, you can't, you know, you're going to be bumping into this, these things all the time. So that's what I was already thinking about. So I was like, well, shoot, you know, I'm going to have to use a, a mini gun in here. And the hose is going to be in the way, too. So I was thinking about having an elbow on there. I don't know. So it's, it's a little tricky to do. I mean, some of the other guys have done it without these in, but on mine, I couldn't really do that. I'll leave some of these out and then paint it and then paint these and then put them on. I don't know. I just figured just work it out. Just get in there and do the best I can. And then what I'll do is when once these things are back on, I'm going to have to crawl in there. And try and touch up now I don't even know if I'll be able to do it with a paint gun I may just use I know the box is pretty crappy but one of these pre valves um, the problem with using one of these is if you tip it it leaks paint out they you know they're not so but the thing I would be doing is pro mostly is spraying upward you know so I'm thinking well I could go in there with one of these and just kind of paint and just because the spray hose and all that's all going to be in the way trying to use a gun, trying to touch up. And like I said, if there's dry spots in here or anything like that, I don't really don't care much. I'm just looking for the protection. Paint is for two things, to protect and to beautify. So I'm lo looking at the protection side of it. And if you can look in there and see it being gray, that's beautification. So I'm cool with that. But when normally it would have been just that other gray that was like inside the vans that's all it was just a real thin coat of primer that was on this stuff that's why they rust out so badly inside here so this is a good correction this will make it last a lot longer than original even though you know there's going to be areas where i can't get paint like that they dip normally um it will probably last outlast the original quite a long time so especially if it's taken care of after doing this work so anyway one of these things if you look those up pre valve <clears throat> they're kind of cool but like i said if you try and spray downward it's gonna dribble <laughs> so just so you know that they spray straight on you can spray it hold it up like a spray can and spray straight this direction but if you're painting you can paint a little bit downward but if you're and if you're painting upward they work okay but if you're trying to paint like horizontal no it just dribbles so they don't work that great for a lot of things. But they would work for a lot of things, but they don't work very good for some. So anyway, it looks like this. You can see that. Anyway, that's why I have all that stuff. I have those things just in case. If I had to crawl in a little hole, paint, that might work better. So a little idea for you guys that are at home. All right, we'll continue on with the work and uh, see you guys later in the video. Hopefully I didn't ramble on too much. I'll talk to you later on the video.
right, well, I managed to get everything painted and I made sure to cover everything. I made sure to get runs, orange peel, dry spots, dirt. I made sure to get all that stuff because guess what? I don't care. Just want to let you know. Once the engine's in here, you don't really see any of that. And it's just, to me, it's just a, a lot of time to spend trying to do something, especially when you're going all around trying to make sure everything's covered. The most important thing to me, everything's covered and protected. That's what I'm mostly interested in. And yeah, I, I over-reduced it a little, so it dried kind of dull. This paint would not, not normally dry this dull, but I reduced it quite a bit because I have a lot of painting to do. I want to make sure that I have enough to do all of this with a gallon. That's going to be all of this area, all there. I've got these to do. I already did these. And I still need to paint all inside here and then of course all inside the cab. So that's a lot to do with a gallon. I didn't want to buy more than that. Um, if I was interested in making it look fine, I would just go ahead and shoot clear on here. But I really don't care at all. It's just as long as it's got paint on it, it's protected. So the engine gets in there, engine compartments and storage areas. I'm not really interested. When I do the cab, of course I'm going to do that and make it look really nice. I'm going to put a nicer finish on everything in there. I might even decide to clear it. This is a single stage urethane, so it's easy, but I might decide, you know, if I don't have enough to uh, make it shiny, I'll go ahead and clear that as well. Here, no. I'm fine with this just the way it is. I made sure to cover them all just for the haters so you guys can put those comments in. Hey, man, you should have done this and should have done that. Great. Love to hear it. Thanks. I was watching uh, Musty One at the saw at the end of his video. I thought I would maybe share with you guys. I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, the funny thing is, you know, we're on different ends of the country and uh, we have a lot of similarities in our backgrounds and stuff. And, um, you know, more than I even knew at uh, the point, what I'm going to make is, you know, I started doing car stuff when I was really young. Um, I had, and I think he was expressing the same thing. I don't really know. I didn't get a chance to quote what he said, but I think he was saying the same thing at the end of his video, his last video, which was the one where he was fixing his truck, just, you know, doing a repair, and he found a mouse in the uh, timing belt area, and it f jumped the timing. But he expressed at the end of that video um, that it, it's somewhat the, the related to me. I don't know if I'm just getting it wrong or, you know, whatever, just whatever, I'm misinterpreting it, but I'll just explain it to you, is when I was younger, I used to go out you know, my neighbors, I had like two neighbors that I used to hang, go over to their house. And they were, of course, a lot older than me. Uh, when I was between, I'm thinking between five and eight years old, I used to go over to my neighbor's house. And if he was working on something, uh, he was nice enough to let me hang out there. And um, I used to, you know, I, and I would always volunteer to do something. And I would clean, like I, when I first started, I started cleaning parts for him you know when he was doing like his engine on his honda sl100 which that's when i have one of those um and you know he was doing that and then he was rebuilding the engine on his truck or you know taking it out and getting a rebuilt engine and put it in and i was the parts cleaning guy at first you know and then but that's how i learned a lot of the stuff that i knew know now and i carried that into high school then i learned uh i took four years or three years of uh, auto, actually three and a half years of auto classes. And, and you know, the first class I took, if I got an A, then I could bypass this other class. So of course, what did I do? You know, I got an A. I made sure to really study and do everything. Um, and I knew a lot of it from helping him and my other neighbor. So I had this one neighbor who had a truck and motorcycle. Then I had this other neighbor who was a really outgoing crazy guy he was a, a fighter pilot i didn't know that at the time but he was a fighter pilot i found out years later uh, and uh, he used to uh he he used to buy basket case motorcycles and stuff like that and so whenever his garage was open i would go over there and hang out you know and that's kind of what um i 
like about the YouTube is it's my opportunity to do what was given to me, you know, as is to share with other people how I do stuff and how uh, to learn how to do things that maybe you've never done. And, you know, maybe I'm not the best at it. Maybe I'm only so good. And, or, you know, maybe I'm way better than you are. And, and, and it just depends, you know, maybe there's people way better than me, of course, you know, to watch and that's fine. You know, we all learn from each other about, you know, how to do this stuff, you know, how to fix cars and how to make them look good and, you know, repair them. And, you know, I used to, when I was a kid, you know, this is when I was, before I was even uh, th- 12 or 13 years old, I was learning how to, you know, put together a motorcycle from a basket, you know, a whole a whole motorcycle from nothing. And we did a Bull Taco 250 and we did, um, he had the go-karts and we we worked on all those things. And he had this go-kart that would do 94 miles an hour. We took it to uh, to uh, uh, Ontario Raceway and he ran it and it was fun. Later on in life, I actually ran into him. I hadn't seen him in many years and I ran into the same guy and um, I, I, talked to him and his son was 20 something years old and I hadn't seen you like that's how long I, I he had the baby when when he was on my street and I ran into him and his son goes is my dad bullshitting me um did he really have a go-kart that went 90 some odd miles an hour I said yep I drove it I know that thing was fast I was scared of the thing when I was just I was like you know 12 years old or something 11 12 years old and I rode that thing around, uh, you know, it just scared the heck out of me because it had so much power. And he goes, really? And I said, yeah, he took it to Ontario Raceway back when it was open and ran it around. He goes, oh, that story's true. I didn't know if it was or not. <laughs> so it was kind of cool, you know, I got with Jimmy and learned how to uh, and talk to him about stuff that happened, you know, when we were younger. So, of course, I had that opportunity to learn from other people. And I thought, you know, YouTube would be a great vehicle for me to uh, do the same thing. Uh, and I think Musty One has the same reason. You know, I think he had a similar upbringing where he hung out with, you know, his neighbors or something like that. And that's what he expressed, I believe, in that part of his video. It might be something you always want to go listen to. It was kind of cool. This is at the very end. You know, a lot of people don't listen to the very end of the video. So I thought I'd put this in the middle so you guys would maybe go check that out. Anyway, I'll talk to you a little bit later. Let's get busy.
All right, so we're looking good for paint now. I'll put uh, the D, uh, primer, uh, Tanko primer on here as a DTM sealer. And I got pretty much most of the stuff cleaned up there. I mean, that's so hard to work on down in there. It's just really hard. So anyway, you know, I'll tell you, when, when people come to buy stuff, and let's say somebody commented a little while back and said, hey, if you sell it, you know, you should do this and that and the other. And, you know, I, I appreciate you guys. You know, that's okay. You can say that stuff and it's fine. But, you know, whenever I do sell something, it's, it's always a good deal. It's a fair price. I don't ask some ridiculous amount of money for something that I do sell. And if somebody comes over and they start looking and picking apart every stuff, I just walk over the garage door, shut it, and I say, no soup for you. Anybody know what that means?
Well, there it is, guys. I sprayed the rest of this off camera. It's just a pain to move the camera and stuff for this. But I got the tops all done with the sides with the minigun. And then just, again, I shot the floors twice and the sides twice. Everything, pretty much everything got hit twice. I mean, I just did the best I can. It's really hard to spray in here. It's just impossible, really. And that's fine. It doesn't need to be, you know, all it needs to be is protected. And when the doors open right here, all you can see is so much. When the tops are on here, it's going to be really dark in there. So we're not looking for much beautification just more just the color there and then more of the uh rust being you know covering it up really good so the rust won't come back so it's it it's probably gonna last a lot longer than i mean that's a lot more than the factory put on it i didn't put anything there's no paint in there i just dipped in that primer when it went through the vats and whatever laid on there was on there and whatever wasn't wasn't so it didn't get much paint. I think when they shot the outside, they just shot whatever kind of landed on the floors. That was what left they left there. Put in the bake oven and done. You know, it wasn't wasn't intended to still be here. This car, especially these bucket trucks, they just got to be used. You know, nobody cares about those, right? They got it used and then, you know, thrown in a yard somewhere and. This one somehow survived. I don't. I don't know how, but it, it looks great. Once it's got all the stuff in there, it's got all the gas tank and all that. Um, it's a runner. You know, it's not much, not far away from that, really. So anyway, that uh, talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hopefully, it wasn't too boring I'm watching all that that spraying. Sometimes that's really boring, and I just shot it outside. Had no worries about dirt, nothing. I didn't even tack rag it. I wasn't gonna, not inside there. It's just too hard to get in there. And Nah, I'm not doing that. A lot of dry spots in it. Uh, maybe not really any misses, but some white spots maybe. But enough on there. This paint, it doesn't take much. I mean, it's, when it's It stays. It's bit on there so good. You know, you can't get it loosened. It's a really hard surface even if it's thin i think this paint will be much more than what was on there again originally they didn't have much of anything on there so anyway i'll talk to you in the next video please like share and subscribe